Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this video we're going to be covering the functional options pattern in Go and how you can use it to really improve how you configure things within your Go applications. Now this was a pattern that a former colleague of mine showed me and honestly it was a bit like discovering fire for me. It is an incredible way for developers to extend things like clients or libraries and allow folks to really configure the, the internals of those clients um, to suit their needs. Cool, so enough preamble, let's dive into the code and let's have a look at what we've got here currently. So this example code, I've created a client and a constructor function and this client allows us to fetch Pokemon. Now within the main function, you can see I instantiate this Poke client using the constructor function and then we attempt to fetch Charizard. And so if we run that in the terminal down below, you can see that it's been able to successfully hit that API and fetch some information about Charizard, such as its weight, the order in the Pokedex, and the base experience it comes with. Cool. So if we have a look at our client itself, it's defined of a base URL, and this base URL is set to the default URL, which is the live production API for fetching Pokemon. Now, if we wanted to offer folks the ability to instantiate things with different base URLs, then we've got a couple of options. So we could start with new with base URL and create an entirely new constructor function. And we could do client return and client. And then we could do base URL and that will equal base URL, which we'll pass in as a parameter. Now this approach with constructors certainly does work and I've seen it in plenty of Go applications in the wild. However, there is a slightly better way of doing this that would allow for more configurability of whatever lies within this client struct here. Cool. So the first thing I generally do is define a new type called options. And this is a function that takes in a pointer to the client that we want to be able to configure. Next, we want to define a variadic argument. We'll call it ops. And this will be of type options like so. Finally, we want to modify how we instantiate the client within the constructor. So we'll start with client is equal to client and we'll spell it correctly. And then we want to loop through all of the options in range opt and then apply these options to the client like so. Finally, we want to return the client itself. Now we can keep in some sensible defaults so we had the base URL as equal to the default URL in the initial example. So let's keep that in. And that should be us good to go. Cool. So let's, for example, say we wanted to offer a, an options function that would allow us to change the base URL. We could do func with base URL and base URL string. And then this would return func point to the client. So return func c client and the c dot base URL would equal base URL like so. Now, if we have a look at where we instantiated the Pokemon client previously in the main function, you can see that nothing has changed. And this is us basically saying we want to accept all of the sensible defaults within the original constructor function. So in this case, we'll use the default URL. However, we now have the power to specify different base URLs that we'd like to hit, which is incredibly powerful if you're doing things like writing the unit tests, as we said before. Now, so far, the example has been fairly minimal. However, let's take a look at when we have more complex objects within our client struct, such as the HTTP client. Now, as you can see here, I've configured a HTTP client in the default constructor, and I've set things like the timeout, the transport, and things like max idle connections and max connections per host. Now, the only reason I've changed these is just to provide an example as to how powerful the functional options parameter pattern can be. So don't jump at me saying that the timeout is too aggressive. I know it's just an example. 
Now, if you wanted to offer the ability for folks consuming this client to change any of these variables, then we could use the same approach that we've done with the base URL and provide them with a new function. And let's do with HTTP client. And let's do client http.client. Again, this will return a client function. So return func c client. And then we can do c http client is equal to client. Perfect. Now let's take a look at how we'd use this. So let's go down to the main function. Let's pass this in. And let's create a new HTTP client. So let's do HTTP client. And let's set the timeout to something more sensible, like say five seconds, five times time dot second. Cool. So hopefully this video has helped demonstrate just how powerful this pattern is when it comes to configuring things within your Go applications. That's all we're gonna be covering in this video. Now, if you found it useful, then please let me know in the comments section down below. Leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more Go programming content. Cheers.